Hello everybody, I'm Mas Barnkopf from Kaiser Power Electronics and this is uh, the teardown of a Ethan Powerware 9390 which is a 60 kV uh, ampere uh, UPS um, system. It consists of six uh, large uh, cabinets which, which you can see here. Um, this is uh, really destroyed here at the uh, junkyard but um, I've taken some of these uh, inverter units home and some of the um, filtering uh, parts here that I will take apart and also the input rectifier that we have over here. The bright sun and the loud noises on the junkyard made it quite difficult to actually do a proper video while I was there. So uh, I took some pictures uh, so I could just give you a quick walkthrough before uh, showing you the teardown of the components that I took home. So here at first we have a picture of a installed system. Here we have uh, two inverter cabinets and um, four battery uh, cabinets. Uh, now the system that was uh, thrown out that I found uh, was twice as big as this installation. If we take a look at the um, um, specifications plate here, we can see in the upper right corner that this is specified as a 660 kVA unit. Um, but it also has another sticker uh, right in the middle of the screen where it says it's maybe an 80 uh, kVA unit. So I'm, I'm not quite sure uh, what size system this really was, but um, at least it's a 60 kVA. So here is one of the four inverter cabinets uh, lying on the ground and this is actually one of those in the best condition, believe it or not. Uh, it has been uh, taking a lot of damage from the uh, crane hooks when it was uh, unloaded and thrown into the stack of junk. Um, at the bottom here we can see the input output terminals, then uh, the uh, contact relays above those and a huge uh, distribution bus bar in the middle with all the colored wires uh, which uh, supplies and takes output from the inverters that can be seen uh, in the upper part. Um, at the bottom there we have the uh, input rectifier bridge and in the uh, lid that is open we have the control boards and control power supplies. Here uh, with a little close-up we can see the uh, two uh, front inverters sitting inside the uh, cabinet and uh, at the top we have the uh, network modules and uh, peripheral uh, connectors. Uh, now if we take a closer look at the um, control panel in the lid, we can see here at the right side we have two power supplies. Um, this is uh, so they can scale the uh, unit. So if you, for example, bought a 30 kVA unit, we, you will only have one power supply sitting here. And most likely only two inverters installed instead of four. But the rest of the cabinet is the same. Um, the uh, control uh, part over at the left side contains of a, a gate driver control board, which is the upper part which also has all connectors down to current transformers and network connections. The uh, CPU board uh, is uh, made with two large, um, what do you call those, um, DIN connectors there, the two gray ones. And it's uh, made pretty smart where you can actually upgrade the uh, CPU and sensing calculation board itself uh, and actually have some uh, pretty basic uh, inverter hardware for the rest of the cabinet. So, let's take a closer look at the teardown videos of the components. Here I have the three parts that I have uh, taken home with me, which is the uh, input rectifier, the intermediate uh, capacitor bank, and one of four inverters uh, that were in each cabinet. Uh, there were um, four cabinets with four inverters each. So, at first, this is not an ant miner, um, could look like it, a little bit uh, wilder. Um, the inverter here has a lot of inductors, um, some IGBTs hidden under this heatsink, we'll take a closer look at that. And then uh, there is the whole uh, capacitor bank. There's uh, two sizes of capacitors uh, and we will also take a closer look of how that is configured into this huge uh, terminal bank. So, let's get started. The active input rectifier bridge, which we have here, 
also says uh, static switchboard. Um, it is uh, unfortunately destroyed a little bit from the uh, crane handling. But uh, obviously uh, what we have here is a uh, three-phased um, IGBT or SCR switch the rectifier. We have the three input phases here. There is uh, three uh, current transformers for each of the input phases. Goes over here to the uh, main board. Um, there's some uh, shunt resistors. Um, here it says a uh, programming header. So uh, obviously it's, it's controlled by a single uh, PIC uh, controller and then it has uh, some uh, IGPT driver or SCR driver chips. There is uh, some uh, gate drive transformers here for isolation and there is the wires down to phase C, phase B, phase A. The uh, output is the other three wires here. Um, and we will take a closer look at that when we once we get underneath. If we take a look at the uh, side here, we can see that the inputs uh, are mounted with some large fuses here. The useful parts from uh, this inverter is, yeah, maybe not that useful, but three uh, unknown current transformers. Um, the part number didn't turn up anything uh, useful, so maybe they're just trash. Then there are three uh, Simicron um, SKKT 162-16, uh, which are thyristor or diode modules. Uh, they're rated for 156 amperes at 1600 volts. Uh, and as you can see, this is a doubled diode module. Then there were the uh, Busman input fuses. These are 355 uh, ampere fast semiconductor fuses. So they're also quite useful to use any, in any high power project where you would want to limit the, the short circuit current in case of anything going wrong. So let's take a look at the capacitors. The capacitor bank consists of uh, four clusters of parallel capacitors. Um, these are all uh, Gentech. Um, polypropylene um, capacitors uh, with metallized uh, for, uh, film uh, and we can see these are 370 volt AC 45 um, microfarads and the bigger cans that we have here at the back um, it's also 45 microfarads but at 600 volt AC now these are um, Piled up in uh, the left string here goes to uh, two of the um, inverters and the, the right one also goes to two inverters. Then the uh, 600 volt um, filtering at the back. Um, I think this is uh, to the intermediate uh, stage or the battery stage um, because it uses uh, the same uh, color wires as, uh, as the battery connectors. Um, there is also uh, two small uh, snubber boards, um, which is actually quite funny. Um, you can see that they have uh, various uh, sizes of capacit capacitors here to uh, to take care of um, spikes and so. But this is not really a low inductance uh, design. Um, you have long wires, uh, different lengths. Um, current sharing is really not that great here, as you can see. Um, it has a one, one long string for the uh, neutral, um, goes all around, and then you have uh, the three phases. So this is phase one, phase two, phase three. Uh, but uh, it's a little little weird design, really. And as we can see over here, they did, however, uh, share the uh, the load on the um, on the battery bank uh, filtering here, as. Uh, it goes this way around and the other lead goes that way around. So that, that's a that's good, uh, good design uh, decision. And then at the front we have some uh, very uh, heavy gauge um, terminals here. Um, these are all uh, connectors uh, up to the um, inverters. And I think this, uh, the blue or uh, the neutral just goes to, um, to the input output. Um, while here we have the uh, one inverter set and the 
other. Um, I forgot which is actually the, the input or and output inverter, but here we can also see there is um, 160 ampere fuses. So it could be that this is the output inverter. Here at the middle, there's also a little um, board with some uh, snubbering on. Um, yeah. Other than that, um, there's a good load of uh, MKP capacitors for me here, and the rest is just scrap. Here we have it, the big main inverter. Now this has, there's four of these per UPS unit, which means if it's a 6 to 60 kilovolt ampere uh, unit, each of these are uh, on 15 kiloamps or kilo, kilovolt amps. Um, as we can see here, it consists uh, of um, a large array of inductors um, and then we have the different supply voltages uh, or output voltages coming here so I can only assume that the uh, see what we have here these are network cables no That we have a DC link voltage in uh, white and black, and then for some reason we have five set of wires. Not completely sure how this um, adds up, but uh, we will find out when we take this apart. If we look at the other side, this heavy unit. We can see that uh, there is a large main board where everything connects down to. Um, over here we have all the inductors. Over here we have the IGPTs, uh, IGPT modules uh, mounted. And then there is uh, the gate drive board and communications board that sits here. Um, this also connects on to the other inverters. So they all run on some uh, bus network. All right, uh, let's get this taken apart. Now this is a rather interesting piece of inverter technology because from what I can judge, this is the neutral wire. These are the three phases, but the red wire goes to the, um, I thought that was the battery uh, intermediate output input uh, or battery bank, but that just puzzles me even, uh, it puzzles me even more. So. When I can't really make any sense of, sense of it from, let's say, these uh, three phases, because the IGPT modules that we have here are Infineon FS35R12. These are 30 th 35 amps um, IGPT modules at 1200 volts. But these are actually uh, three half bridges in each module. So we have three half bridges, three half bridges, three half bridges, three half bridges, and so on. So this must work in multiply streams that are paralleled. So in fact, it might be driving the three phases from two parallel modules here. And the last two modules could be the intermediate converter. Um, and of course, it would have been easier to uh, to say much more about if I had had the whole complete unit and, and look at that from the scrapyard, but that was not really possible. On the input side, um, it is apparent that we have um, the negative uh, DC input and positive DC input here. And for filtering, we have uh, six pieces of 450 volt, 1500 microfarads uh, of electrolytic capacitors. Now, as you can see, there is space for uh, an additional four of these. Um, so while this is almost the top model, I would guess that if you order the much bigger uh, 90 kVA uh, UPS uh, system, it would have um, additional electrolytic capacitors installed here and possible some uh, larger IGPT bricks. The inductors are also uh, quite interesting because while the um, 
other inductors that I have seen are normally two E cores. Um, this is uh, more, much more like an uh, air cord uh, inductor. There's two layers of uh, this heavy gauge uh, lit wire on a uh, yeah, what's that? That's like five times twelve centimeter and two centimeter uh, thick ferrite block. So that's that's a good kilogram here, um, and it runs with the pa two parallel wires uh, through it. So it had two of these per set of um, three half bridges. Um, it's quite interesting. And uh, I desoldered all these because uh, lit wire is, of course, annoying to uh, to get the uh, the varnish off if you want to reuse them. So I'll save these for some uh, nice inverter projects or something like that. Else, you can maybe find them on my eBay page. Who knows? Now the uh, smaller IDPT uh, modules here, they will be a little bit more different, uh, difficult to reuse. As you can see, they are soldered soldered in by yeah, what's that? Nine, eleven. Yeah. A good 20 pins uh, per module, so that's almost impossible to desolder in any easy way without damaging the module itself. But other than that, this is a uh, pre pretty huge board um, and good, good, good layout on the the module, etc. So a very, very interesting uh, thing to take apart, but unfor unfortunately uh, very hard to reuse uh, the ITBTs from these new units. That is unfortunately what we see with new technology. It gets smaller and more integrated and harder for amateurs to reuse. I hope you enjoyed this teardown and uh, I am looking forward to show you a project that I have with the inverter PCB. As I have looked uh, a little further uh, and close upon it, uh, it seems like I can reuse it for some Tesla coil work. So stay tuned for that project. So until next time, see ya.